Hello and welcome to our video on the different types of contracts used in the engineering, procurement, and construction EPC industry. I'm Peter, and I'm grateful to EPC Land for providing me with this platform to discuss another topic related to the process industry. Today, we will be discussing the six main types of contracts used in this industry. Each of these contracts has its own advantages and disadvantages and is suited for different project scenarios. By the end of this video, you will have a clear understanding of each of these contracts and be able to make an informed decision on which type of contract is best suited for your project. So, without further ado, let's dive into the world of EPC contracts. Let's begin with first one in the table. Lump sum contracts are a type of contract commonly used in the engineering, procurement, and construction EPC industry. They are typically used when the scope of work is well-defined and there is low risk of changes or unexpected costs. One of the main advantages of a lump sum contract is that it provides cost certainty and predictability for the client. With a lump sum contract, the client knows exactly how much they will be paying for the project and can budget accordingly. This can be particularly important for clients with limited budgets or tight project schedules. However, there are also some potential disadvantages to lump sum contracts. Because the contractor assumes the risk of unexpected costs or changes to the scope of work, they may include contingencies and or inflated pricing in the lump sum to account for risks and uncertainties. This can result in higher overall costs for the client. Overall, lump sum contracts are best suited for projects with a well-defined scope of work and a low risk of changes or unexpected costs. They can provide cost certainty and predictability for the client, but may result in higher overall costs if the contractor includes contingencies and or inflated pricing to account for risks and uncertainties. As with any type of contract, it is important to carefully consider the specific terms and conditions of a lump sum contract before entering into it. Let's proceed to the second type of contract mentioned in the table. Cost plus contracts are another type of contract commonly used in the engineering, procurement, and construction EPC industry. They are typically used when the scope of work is uncertain or likely to change, and the client wants greater transparency in pricing. One of the main advantages of a cost plus contract is that it provides transparency and allows the client to see all costs and markups. With a cost plus contract, the client is responsible for reimbursing the contractor for all expenses, including labor, materials, and overhead costs, plus a percentage markup. This can provide greater transparency in pricing and help the client to better understand the costs associated with the project. However, there are also some potential disadvantages to cost plus contracts. Because the contractor is reimbursed for all expenses plus a percentage markup, they may have less incentive to control costs. This can result in higher overall costs for the client. Overall, cost plus contracts are best suited for projects with an uncertain scope of work or a high risk of changes. They can provide greater transparency in pricing and help the client to better understand the costs associated with the project. However, they may result in higher overall costs if the contractor does not effectively manage costs. As with any type of contract, it is important to carefully consider the specific terms and conditions of a cost plus contract before entering into it. The following contract on the list is the third one, which is Unit Price Contracts. Unit Price Contracts are another type of contract commonly used in the engineering, procurement, and construction EPC industry. They are typically used when the scope of work involves repetitive or standardized work that can be easily quantified. One of the main advantages of a unit price contract is that it provides flexibility and allows the client to pay for work based on specific units or quantities. With a unit price contract, the client pays the contractor a predetermined unit price for each unit of work completed. This can be particularly useful for projects with a large number of similar tasks as it allows the client to easily adjust the scope of work as needed. However, there are also some potential disadvantages to unit price contracts. Because the contractor is reimbursed for all expenses plus a unit price, they may have less incentive to control costs. 
this can result in higher overall costs for the client. Overall, unit price contracts are best suited for projects with repetitive or standardized work that can be easily quantified. They can provide flexibility in pricing and help the client to better manage the scope of work. However, they may result in higher overall costs if the contractor does not effectively manage costs. As with any type of contract, it is important to carefully consider the specific terms and conditions of a unit price contract before entering into it. Next up, we have the fourth contract. Guaranteed Maximum Price, GMP, Contracts. These contracts are another type of contract commonly used in the engineering, procurement, and construction, EPC, industry. They are typically used when the scope of work is well-defined, but there is a moderate risk of changes or unexpected costs. One of the main advantages of a GMP contract is that it provides cost certainty and predictability for the client, with the contractor assuming the risk of exceeding the maximum price. With a GMP contract, the contractor agrees to a maximum price for the project, which provides the client with the assurance that the project will not exceed a certain cost. However, the contractor also has an incentive to keep costs down in order to increase their profit margin. However, there are also some potential disadvantages to GMP contracts. Because the contractor assumes the risk of exceeding the maximum price, they may inflate the guaranteed maximum price to account for risks and uncertainties. This can result in higher overall costs for the client. Overall, GMP contracts are best suited for projects with a well-defined scope of work but a moderate risk of changes or unexpected costs. They can provide cost certainty and predictability for the client, while also incentivizing the contractor to keep costs down. However, they may result in higher overall costs if the contractor inflates the guaranteed maximum price. As with any type of contract, it is important to carefully consider the specific terms and conditions of a GMP contract before entering into it. Okay, now let's move to next contract of this session. Engineering, Procurement, and Construction Management, EPCM. These contracts are a type of contract commonly used in the engineering, procurement, and construction, EPC, industry. They are typically used when the client wants greater control over the project and or when there are multiple contractors involved. One of the main advantages of an EPCM contract is that it provides greater flexibility and control for the client. With an EPCM contract, the client oversees the project and manages multiple contractors, which allows them to have greater input and control over the project. Additionally, because the client manages the project themselves, they can potentially save money by avoiding markups that would be charged by a general contractor. However, there are also some potential disadvantages to EPCM contracts. Because the client manages the project themselves, it requires more resources and expertise to effectively manage the project. This can be challenging for clients who are not experienced in project management or who do not have sufficient resources to manage the project effectively. Overall, EPCM contracts are best suited for clients who want greater control over the project and who have the resources and expertise to manage the project effectively. They can provide flexibility and potentially save money by avoiding markups charged by a general contractor. However, they require more resources and expertise from the client to manage the project effectively. As with any type of contract, it is important to carefully consider the specific terms and conditions of an EPCM contract before entering into it. Okay, now let's move to last contract of this session. Design-build contracts. These are a type of contract commonly used in the engineering, procurement, and construction EPC industry. They are typically used when the client wants a single point of responsibility and or when there is a need for a fast-track project schedule. One of the main advantages of a design-build contract is that it provides a streamlined and integrated approach to the project. With a design-build contract, the design and construction phases of the project overlap, which can result in faster project completion times and potentially lower costs. Additionally, with a single point of responsibility, the client does not have to manage multiple contractors, which can simplify the project management process. 
However, there are also some potential disadvantages to design-build contracts. Because the design and construction phases overlap, it can result in conflicts of interest or reduced quality if the design and construction are not adequately separated. Additionally, the contractor may have less incentive to control costs since they are responsible for both design and construction and may be motivated to maximize their profits. Overall, design-build contracts are best suited for projects with a need for a fast-track project schedule or when the client wants a single point of responsibility. They can provide a streamlined and integrated approach to the project, potentially resulting in faster completion times and lower costs. However, it is important to ensure that the design and construction are adequately separated and that the contractor has appropriate incentives to control costs and maintain quality. As with any type of contract, it is important to carefully consider the specific terms and conditions of a design-build contract before entering into it. That's it for today's video on the types of contracts used in the engineering, procurement, and construction industry. We hope that you found this information useful and informative. Remember, choosing the right type of contract is critical for the success of your project, and it is important to carefully evaluate the advantages and disadvantages of each option. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more videos on the EPC industry and other related topics.